In this video, I'm going to explain how you develop your code to play the match game on the AIGaming.com site. The AI Gaming Game Manager will call your code whenever it is your turn to make a move in the game. It sends you all of the information about the current state of the game and you return the move that you want to make. I'm going to explain where and how you do this using the online code editor on the AIGaming.com site. Let's get started. This video assumes you've created a computer vision API key on the Azure Cognitive Services site. You'll need a key in order to run the code. There are instructions on how to get a computer vision API key on the AIGaming.com help pages. To start, we'll go to the editor page, make sure that we have the match game type selected, and then create a new file based on the simple random template code. And that's all I need to do. I can run the code and play a complete game. The code in this editor window contains everything that is required to play a very simple game. So where do we start if we want to improve how our bot plays? The entry point into our game playing code is the calculate move function, where we need to do just that. Calculate the next move we want to make in the game. Calculate move acts like our main function. We can call other functions from this, but primarily it is here that you can control your bot and add your strategy. The calculate move function will be called by our game manager every time that it needs you to make a move in the game. It's going to be called many times during each game that you play. Each time calculate move is called, it will be sent all of the information about the current state of the game. And it will need to return the move that you want to make next in the game. We can see in this calculate move function that it receives a parameter, the game state. This is the information that tells you everything about the current state of the game. What type of move it is, what any playing boards currently look like, what types of pieces are on the boards and more. We need all of this game state information because our calculate move function doesn't remember any information between moves unless we explicitly tell it to do so. This is why we're sent the complete game state every time we're asked to make a move in the game. It also has to return a JSON object, which represents the move you want to make in the game. A move in the match game will be the numbers of the two tiles you want to turn over and hope to match. I've saved a copy of the game state JSON object that the calculate move function receives in a text file so that we can take a look at it. You can see the structure of the information and all of the fields it contains. This JSON is a full representation of the current state of the game, so there's lots of information in it. A fuller description of each field can be found on the help pages for the match game or under the book icon on the editor page we can go to the programmer's reference page for the match game. The main field in the game state that you will be concerned with is upturned tiles. This list contains the contents of the two tiles that you have chosen to turn over. You'll need to analyze the images on these tiles using the computer vision API. Having received the game state information and decided on our move, we return that move as another JSON object. I've saved a copy of the move JSON object so that we can take a look at it. A move will be a list of the two tiles that we want to turn over next in the game. The JSON here shows that our tiles list contains the numbers of the two tiles that we want to turn over and there is more information about the move object under the book icon in the online code editor. That is the framework of how games are played. The game manager calls calculate move and passes it the current state of the game as a JSON object. Calculate move must then return a JSON object that states the move it wants to make in the game. This repeats until the game ends because someone wins or because the game times out in some way. For the match game, we've provided another template with examples of how to use the Microsoft API. 
I can create a new file using the Microsoft API template code under the New button at the top of the screen. We'll need to add the Microsoft Computer Vision API key, and I've stored a temporary API key in another file here so that I can quickly add one to the template code. Again, the help pages on the AI Gaming site give more information about how to get a computer vision key. The version of the match game that we will play needs you to identify three different categories of information. The images on the tiles can either be animals, they can be landmarks, or the tile images can contain words. This template code file contains all of the code needed to identify and match tiles with animals on them. You can then use this as an example to help you extend the code to identify and match landmarks and to identify and match words. Although this template code plays a basic game, we've added lots of comments to explain how it operates and to suggest what should be added to improve the code's performance and win rate. Now that you know that the Calculate Move function is the main function called by our game manager every time it's your turn to make a move, you should work through the code to understand how it plays the game. Once you are familiar with how it matches animals, your first step should be to replicate this to match landmarks and then words. There are other videos in this series that explain more about how to add landmark and text matching. That's it for this introduction to how to code your game playing bot. There are more videos in this series, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you.